Hey everybody, uh, long time no see. Special shout out to my six followers. I uh, love you guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, today I'm coming at you with a shoe review. This is for the Hoka Challenger ATR. This is a trail shoe from Hoka. Uh, it's based on the Clifton model. And I just got back from a 10K trail run like 15 minutes ago. And so I am inspired to do a review on this shoe. So first I'm going to tell you the bad things about it. And second, I'm going to tell you the good things about it. So the bad. Uh, the bad. This is a hoka. <laughs> that means that it's narrow. Um, the shoe's too narrow. If you have narrow feet, you'll probably love it. But... Um, the shoe's too narrow. I don't have really especially narrow feet. So uh, you'll see that I uh, pretty much have this shoe skip laced all the way up. And that helps to uh, give more space in the shoe. Um, I'm going to cut the shoe up eventually to, to make the toe box bigger. But uh, it's still pretty new. So I'm not going to do that yet. Um, I guess the good thing about uh, this upper on this Hoka is that this this mesh material they use is actually pretty nice and soft and these these welded inlays are very flat and smooth and stuff and they don't rub you weird in any particular place so it's narrow and it kind of squeezes a little bit but uh, the upper is a decent material so it doesn't really doesn't really do anything bad to your foot uh, the second thing that's awful about this shoe is the factory insole is crap it's basically like this paper thin, worthless, flat thing. It's no good. I pitched that thing after like uh, 20, 40 miles, something like that. And um, I put in um, an aftermarket insole that was um, a lot more foam, a lot more cushy. It's gonna make this thing super cushy, super cushy shoe. So anyway that uh, I have a low volume foot but that uh, thicker insole more supportive insole whatever it was um, gave my foot more volume and so it actually made the shoe tighter so I had to take it out and uh, how I end up compromising is um, I took a insole out of a Brooks Ghost and I've run a lot of miles in the Ghost and the shoe fits me pretty well works pretty well for me uh, it just doesn't last very long but anyway um, it has a, a nice shape to it, and it just it just contours from to my foot real well, and it made the Hoka um, contour to my foot real well. It made it um, a lot more confidence inspiring. So, anyway, I mentioned the low volume. If you have a higher volume foot, like a really kind of thick, fat foot, or like a high um, high arch or something, the shoe might not have enough volume for you. Um, I don't know. You have to try it for yourself. I could be wrong. Um, the last thing is the uh, tongue, and this is not a problem for some people, and it, I don't particularly like it, but so I'm just giving you my opinion. I don't like this unpadded tongue. They've addressed this problem in the new uh, Clifton 2 shoe, um, but this tongue, I kind of had to like lace it a bunch of different ways to try and get it to work. Right, it seemed like it kind of slipped a lot and slipped down, and then when you tie it up, it'd kind of bunch up and stuff. So, anyway, I think it's kind of a crappy tongue. So, anyway, on to the good. Uh, it's slightly flexy. Um, anyway, I do believe that this shoe promotes very good biomechanics when running. I have a very nice forefoot strike in this shoe, and I would uh, say the feeling of this shoe is like like running in it and landing on it. I don't want to say it's like grass, but I would say that it's like, uh, say a golf course greens turf, like landing on that nice turf. It's just a real nice cushy um, landing. It's, it's great. It's a very confidence inspiring. Um, you would think a shoe with this much foam would be unstable or something, but uh, the guys at Hoka got it figured out because this shoe runs really well and I mean that I'm not paid to say that do anything this shoe runs really well and and I feel really good when I'm running in it especially on the trail I like some of their other shoes better for uh, asphalt but um, when I'm kinda trail running on this shoe uh, it feels good and that's why I'm doing this review because I just 
ran in it in it real good. So, uh, like I said, it's very cushy, um, and it's just confidence inspiring. I mean, if you got 130 bucks in your pocket or whatever, I think this costs. Um, you might give it a try, especially if you're if you're running on trails and stuff. It's uh, I have 150 miles in it now. Probably a good 120 of those maybe are on uh, asphalt. Um, this shoe's not really meant for that, but uh, the rubber is actually holding up um, pretty well, especially in the front. I run a lot of hills, and so I get a lot of downhill stuff that shaves the back of my shoes off pretty quick. But um, this area right in here, uh, it's it's not really wearing. And, and the rocks around here are really, really, really sharp. So, um, anyway, I give uh, this uh, Hoka Challenger ATR a pretty big thumbs up. It does have some problems that I don't like, but um, the, the solid good points about this shoe outweigh those negatives. And they're, they're actually some pretty big, big negatives, but um, it's a great shoe. I actually like it. So... Um, I'm going to do a few more shoe reviews, hopefully, for you guys. I always say I'm going to do more videos, and then I'm never motivated to do them because I really don't care about making videos. But um, I know people enjoy them, so I'll try and make some more. i got a couple more Hoka shoe reviews that I can probably do. Um, so anyway, that's it for now. Uh, I'll put a link down below. I don't know, it's probably cheaper on Amazon or something, so I'll stick a link down below. Um, anyway, Hoka Challenger ATR. Go give it a shot. Catch you guys next time.